California Congressman Eric Swalwell showing no signs of stopping his lavish spending spree. His campaign just spent nearly $38,000 on travel expenses alone between late May and June. Records show Swalwell also spent $3,500 on a fundraising event in Paris, of all places, and nearly $5,000 for a luxury hotel in Miami earlier this year. Yeah, you got to go big when you go to Miami. Here to react, Tommy Laren, host of Tommy Laren is Fearless on Outkick. Tommy, you think somebody under so much scrutiny for, you know, the whole Fang Fang thing would lay low a little bit, but not so. Why does he feel so emboldened to rack up costs, which he knows are going to be public like this? Well, it's pretty simple. When you have people like Swalwell, AOC, and others that are in such deep blue districts, they know that they can get away with it because they know that they are likely not going to be challenged. Their constituents are going to vote for them anyway. That is the danger of having areas that are so deep blue like that. So it's up to the voters to make a decision. I will say this, though. It's very interesting that he's spending money in Miami, Florida, of all places, because we know how Democrats feel about Governor Ron DeSantis in the state of Florida, yet they keep going there. I'm just happy to hear that he is going to Miami, though, and spending a little bit of that money there besides going to Paris and spending tax dollars in a country that isn't even our own, but our own. But you can always count on a Democrat to spend our tax dollars and our money lavishly and in a way that doesn't benefit the American people whatsoever. This is typical playbook Democrat, typical playbook Eric Swalwell, and I wouldn't expect anything less from him or anyone like him. And, you know, Tommy, candidates aren't allowed to use campaign funds on personal things like vacation, so there has to be some sort of campaign tie-in to spending thousands of dollars at the Ritz in France. Uh, but it does make the question, why go to Paris if you are running for Congress in California? Yeah, well, it's pretty easy because you can just pass this off as an expense and you can make it, as you said, tie it in some way, shape or form, no matter how ridiculously, to some kind of a campaign event. And again, it's up to the people of California to make a change here. When you've got these leaders, these congressional leaders that are supposed to work for you in California, that are supposed to work for us, the American people, and they're spending that kind of money while the rest of us are living under the pinch of the Biden economy, it just goes to show how out of touch they really are. But if you want to make a change, Change, you're going to have to stop voting deep blue and you're going to have to hold your leaders accountable. And there's Republicans that are doing much the same thing. So we have to hold them accountable as well. Equal opportunity as far as accountability here. Mm. Speaking of out of touch, Tommy, New York City Mayor Eric Adams admitting that the Big Apple's schools and health care systems are overrun by illegal migrants, but he's placing the blame on border states. Listen to this. Our system is, was inundated uh, with, uh, you know, those who were seeking shelter because of the callousness of those uh, other states that pushed them out. Schools are going to be impacted. Our health care system is going to be impacted. Uh, our infrastructure is going to be impacted. Uh, but we're willing to do our job. Tommy, does he not hear how ridiculous that sounds, complaining about 3,000 migrants in a city, mind you, of 8 million people, when the border, Texas, Arizona, have been hit with thousands upon thousands of people invading every single day without any infrastructure to deal with it? Well, I say increase these busloads of migrants that are coming to these blue cities and states because they need to feel the pinch of these of these border cities and these border states that are absolutely being overrun and inundated. Now, I actually give the mayor a little bit of credit because he did stress some of the problems and issues that are happening as far as overburdening the system, the infrastructure, the health cares, the school, all those things that are already happening in border cities and border states. But he laid it out perfectly for us. It's not just going to impact border cities and border states. It's going to impact the entirety of the United States of America. And the fact of the matter is, we are not able to sustain what we have going on in our border right now. We cannot absorb hundreds of thousands of people. They cannot all stay in border cities and border states. They are going to fan out. They're going to be in every city, in every state. And the people that are going to be most heavily impacted and negatively impacted are those that live in low-income areas, those minority communities. So I would stress to these blue city mayors that they need to be doing something. It is not your citizens' duty to absorb these people. It is your duty yep. to service the American people first. Make sure to check out Tommy Laren is fearless airing live Mondays, Wednesdays and Thursdays on Outkick Tommy Tuesday. Thank you.